Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you engineers? Welcome to our classes for the QCDD exam preparation for the mechanical engineers. Let me first introduce myself to you. I'm Muhammad Zaini. will be your instructors and uh, teaching you for these classes, inshallah. I have more than 30 years for the experience for the MEP, different and vary from design, construction supervision, project management, and definitely for the civil defense approvals and the submittals and going for the inspection of the civil defense uh, as well and the complying starting from the design to the as built and even during the site activities. Within our classes, what we are going to do it for you. First of all, let us understand what is the purpose for these uh, courses and what we are doing. The course is structured to give you a clear understanding about the civil defense requirements, what they are looking for, and what they are expecting from the mechanical engineer to be certified as certified civil defense engineer for the mechanical discipline. What they are looking for and what they are uh, questioning you. So the course, it is structured and oriented and giving you the information to pass the exam from the civil defense. So this is number one. It is structured to pass the exam of the civil defense. How to pass from this exam? This is the first shop, the first uh, part of the, of the classes itself. So that's why we are going to talk about the classification of the hazards area, about the NFPA standards which will be followed for the uh, QCD as standards for the 2018 and whatever the latest edition of the civil defense of the NFPA sections, what will be the regulations for the civil defense, what they are looking for, what they are questioning for you as a guidelines, what they are expecting to see it in the life safety systems from their regulations, and how the regulation it is linked and merged with the NFPA requirements. In addition, we'll talk about the approvals of the civil defense. What are the major areas related to the approvals of the civil defense? Number one, for the life safety, which will be applicable for all disciplines of the civil defense, either it is architect, or electrical or mechanical, what is the life safety systems? What is the requirements of the life safety? We'll talk about the fire alarm and the integration between the fire alarm and the mechanical systems. And we'll focus in the firefighting system and ACMV, air conditioned mechanical ventilation, which is related to pressurization system, uh, smoke management system, Firefighting will talk about the sprinkler system, dry type and wet time, deluge systems, uh, FM200 for the clean agent as well, in addition to the emergency lighting, which will be a part of the life safety systems. As a mechanical engineer, shall I be aware about all of this one? Yes. You should be aware and having the minimum understanding for the life safety requirements for the fire alarm requirements, for the emergency lighting, either you are, even you are mechanical engineer, but you will be responsible for the safety and the protection, maintenance of the buildings. Somehow you should be aware and all of these systems are linked, integrated with the mechanical disciplines as well. We'll talk about the classification of the building and how they are classified depending on the construction of the building itself and what will be the fire risk. Occupancy classification, which is related to the fire lane. Life safety items like the escape routes, the egress, how to be calculated, how to be considered the number, what is the maximum habitable area and the height for the buildings. Escape route and the lopes for the firefighting lift lobby, for the smoke pressurized lobby, and what will be the regulation 
for each type of occupancy. What is the civil defense? They are looking for for each type of the occupancy, either it is residential, hotel, apartment, industrial, health and care, educational, different types of the occupancy. What are the requirements from the civil defense for each type of them? That's all, not only this one. This is for the exam. But you will be the certified QCDD engineer. You will be eligible to certify the drawing and design on the drawing of the design. Submission for the design drawings, DC2. Submission for the ASBEL. Submission for the modification of the building during maintenance and the operational. It is not part of the exam itself, but we are giving you additional services and additional information will help you as a certified engineer, what will be the requirements to show in the drawings? What I have to submit? Drawings, what level of information? What type of the drawings I have to submit? Documents, what kind of documents, calculations I, I have to show? Certifications, etc. approvals, all of this one, will give it for you at the end. A flow chart for the submission of the process for the civil defense. And the finally, when the civil defenses they are coming for inspection, what they are looking for and what they are expecting to see within your building itself. It's not part of the exam, no, but this is very important for you as an engineer. We'll give you all of this one and what will be the civil defense checking during the inspection and visiting the site. By this one, hoping that will give you a clear understanding and a clear vision where we are and how to tackle and passing the exam. Who have to make the exam for the civil defense? The engineers working for the design, construction supervision, installation, testing, and the commissioning, maintenance for the firefighting and the fire protection system should be certified mechanical engineers and getting the certification from the civil defense department. So the companies, wherever they are working for the design as a consultancy, now they should have a certified engineers. Working for the supervision as a consultant as well, working from the contractor point for the installation, testing and commissioning companies, and even the companies working for the facility management and the maintenance for the uh, life safety system should have a certified engineers as well. So who's eligible to pass the exam and to apply for the exam? Number one should be licensed engineer having the MMUP and UPDA license. Second, the company wherever, where you are working should have at least one QCDD approved engineers. What is the relation between the company and the passing the exam? The exam will give it to you through your company. It is not like the MMUP or UPDA you can apply to yourself. It has to go through the company itself. The PRO of the company, he, has the, he is the one to apply for you to pass to submit your paper and the pass applying for the exam. That's meaning that the company should have within it, the company activity in the registration card and the license activities related to life safety system as a design, construction, testing, commissioning, maintenance, etc. Should have it. Once the PRO submitted the documents, you might get an, a, a call from the civil defense determining for you the exam date. Normally, they are replying and responding within one week, five days, 10 days time, around plus or minus one week. So don't uh, ask your PRO to apply and submit your paper for the exam unless you are ready for the exam. There is no long period in between. 
This is related to application for the exam and the submission. Second one, what will be our study material and how we are going to pass? We should know what is the reference from the civil defense, how they are judging and referring for the exam. Number one, the civil defense fire and life safety guidelines, which is issued by the civil defense. It was issued in uh, 2015, giving the classification and the requirements of the civil defense for the apartment buildings, hotel, residential, all the different types of the occupancy, temporary, educational, health care, storage, industrial, etc. So this is the guidelines of the civil defense, which will be our basis for the civil defense. But civil defense guidelines, it is also linked with the NFPA. We will see how to read both together and what is the information required for the civil defense, how we can get it from the NFPA. And we will explain to you why we have to take this one. Details for the guidelines, civil life and fire and safety guidelines. This is one example uh, from the uh, apartment buildings, how it is structured and we will take a session completely to explain in details for you how you can read this documentation from the civil defense. What is the kind of the buildings? What is the requirements for each uh, discipline? And what is the minimum requirements for the civil defense and MFTA? How to apply it for the low-rise building, medium-rise building, high-rise buildings? In the different categories of the building, what will be the requirements and the how to apply? Apply it as a submission, apply it for the uh, as bill, applying during the inspection and answering the question related in the exam. How we can understand these documents? And these documents exactly, it is related to NFPA. You will see it from the first page of this documentation, it's saying, it is uh, following the NFPA latest editions. Whatever is the latest edition NFPA should be followed, unless it is strictly and clear, clearly mentioned in the QCDD guidelines. Sometimes the civil defense they have higher requirements, higher than the NFPA in a very small area, maybe related to testing and the commissioning, the periods, etc. Uh, this one, depending on the natural uh, of the country in Qatar, and depending on the way how the civil defenses are evaluating the risk and how to protect it, how to manage it, sometimes they are higher than the NFPA in a very, very small areas. We will address it and we'll give it to you a clear understanding. What is the sections of the NFPA they are studying? Sections of the NFPA, will be addressed uh, within our course. NFPA 10, which talk about the portable fire extinguishers. 13, related to the sprinkler system and the installation. 14, for the stand the pipe and the hose system. 20, installation of stationary pumps of the fire protection. 24, installation for the private fire service. 25, testing and the maintenance of water-based fire protection. 92, a smoke control system, which is related to ACMV and the smoke management system and the exit reaction system and the pressurization systems as well. And one of the most important sections of the NFPA, 101, life safety codes. And finally, the clean agent extinguishing system, which is NFPA 2001. How are we going to study this NFPA section? Let me clarify it. Within NFPA, we are not here in our classes studying the NFPA chapters. We are studying from these chapters whatever required to pass the exam of the QCD. What does it mean? For NFPA 13, for the sprinkler system, it's a very big chapter. If you would like to study the NFPA 13, 
there is a different courses related to NFTA 13 only. Talking about NFTA 13 from A to Z, it is covered over 30 educational hours. It's a huge one. Is it required to be to pass the exam? No. You don't need to study the NFTA 13 in full, but we will study what is the requirements for any for civil defense to understand in NFTA 13 to apply. You shouldn't be an expert for the for the NFTA. It is not required, but you should have a minimum requirements allowing you to pass the exam and getting the certification for that. And the QCD, they are not testing your memory. They are testing your knowledge and the understanding for the systems. That's why the exam, it is computer-based exam, and it's an open book. What does it mean, open book? You will have all of these sections of the NFPA in front of the screen, available on, your, on the PC when you are going to the exam. So they are not testing your memory. They are testing your understanding for the NFPA and the, how you can find the easy, the information within the section. And that's what we are test, uh, educating you, how to understand the NFPA chapters and how to get easily the answer from the NFPA, how to search. The NFPA standards on the PC, it will not be searchable. You should know in which area you can, you can, you have to go if they are asking about uh, definitions or testing or maintenance, etc. where I can find the information. You cannot search, but you, you should know how the structure of the NFPA and how to get it. The question itself, it is one and a half hour, 25 questions, almost two minutes, three minutes for the questions. If we are allowing for 10 minutes or something like that for the schematic diagram, so two minutes maximum for each question. So don't, you don't need to spend more time to answer it. You have to make it quickly. And to pass the exam, you should need a 70% minimum mark to pass the exam. This is a clear and a quick understanding how the exam is structured and what will be the interest area. If you require a calculator, it will be available on the PC, but rarely you are using the calculators. Because the QCD, they are not uh, questioning you for the design questions or parameters in the exam. They are questioning your understanding how to apply it. This will be our main topics and our main subject will talk about the course. And I hope we will give you a clear understanding about the requirements of the civil defense, the NFTA related items, which will help you to pass the exam, inshallah. Wish you a good luck. And if you have any questions, please contact us over the WhatsApp or email and go or go to the uh, website, putting your questions and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions in full. Thank you. And very excited to see you in the next classes, inshallah. Thank you. Bye-bye.